June 23rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from the New Testament One should think about us this way, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now what is sought in stewards is that one be found faithful. So for me it is a minor matter that I am judged by you or by any human court, in fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not acquitted because of this. The one who judges me is the Lord. So then, do not judge anything before the time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the motives of hearts. Then each will receive recognition from God. I have applied these things to myself and Apollos because of you, brothers and sisters, so that through us you may learn not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be puffed up in favor of the one against the other. For who concedes you any superiority? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you are satisfied, already you are rich. You have become kings without us. I wish you had become king so that we could reign with you. For I think God has exhibited us apostles last of all, as men condemned to die, because we have become a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to people. We are fools for Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, we are dishonored. To the present hour we are hungry and thirsty, poorly clothed, brutally treated, and without a roof over our heads. We do hard work, toiling with our own hands. When we are verbally abused, we respond with a blessing. When persecuted, we endure. When people lie about us, we answer in a friendly manner. We are the world's dirt and scum even now. I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to correct you as my dear children. For though you may have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers, because I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I encourage you then, be imitators of me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my dear and faithful son in the Lord. He will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you, but I will come to you soon if the Lord is willing, and I will find out not only the talk of these arrogant people, but also their power. For the kingdom of God is demonstrated not in idle talk, but with power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or with love and a spirit of gentleness? God, I so, I so love reading Paul. He, gosh, he's just an amazing, amazing man. But I love the end part where he says, uh, he's talking about sending Timothy, who will teach them the ways in Christ, just as I teach them everywhere in every church, Paul says. And then he goes on to say, some have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you. And at the end, he says, what do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline or with love and a spirit of gentleness? Almost like the warnings I get from you, God. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm laughing. He's like, look, I'm giving you a chance. One, you know better. Two, I'm telling you in this letter, you know better. Three, I'm sending someone to remind you that you know better. And if I have to come back there, just like my dad always said, <laughs> If I have to pull over the car, it's totally what Paul sounds like right now. <laughs> and God, I know you do this to me too. Janelle, if I have to come down there, I am getting much better at hearing your voice, but I am still not there. I, there are so many times where you're hitting me upside the head, literally by with a two by four to get me to pay attention to something. And I'm just oblivious to it. I'm so wrapped up in my own kingdom that I can't even see the path that you've shown me. And, and what's crazy is I was praying for you to show me the path. And, and yet what has happened is I 
was so thinking about me and how I wanted the outcome to be and I was so in control of everything or thought I had the illusion of control that when you were giving me this opportunity to see where you wanted me to go I couldn't even see it because I had these filters on of how things should be because it was how I wanted them to be and I you know me I've asked forgiveness for that a trillion times <laughs> Once I realize I'm doing it, but I, it's so funny. I, I don't even realize as I'm doing it that I'm caught up in Janelle's world instead of your will for my life. God, even though this, this passage reminds me of my dad growing up with three other brothers and sisters. <laughs> um, and I, you know, Paul not only obviously is just an incredible man of God, but he also has a sense of humor it also reminds me of your faithfulness to me, of this demanding love that you have for me, this constant love you have for me, this, this insistence on this relationship, uh, that you are willing to do whatever possible to maintain this relationship, uh, to show me what this relationship looks like. And yet I I just walk around in a daze half the time, not paying attention to what it is you're trying to show me. God, I ask for intentions. I ask for my actions and my words to be very intentional in the rest of today. It would be nice if it was the rest of my life, but we'll start with the rest of today. That I am so aware of our relationship that intentionally I do certain things because of your will. I intentionally say certain things or think certain things um, or react in certain ways. Just like Paul's talking about, you know, if somebody says lies about him, he answers in a friendly manner. Um, contrary to how we normally think because we're such self-focused people. God, I just want to be God-focused. I want to do your will. I want to take my blinders off and I want my life to reflect what you put me here on earth to do. I know it seems like an uphill battle. And I'm sure that's how it was with my dad and four kids. Especially on those long family <laughs> trips. But God, I just am I'm praying for the strength. I'm praying for the will. I'm praying for you to help guide me. And teach me more and more about what our relationship looks like. Thank you. For, thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for your grace. I promise I'm working on it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.